Ethan worked for his father as a lockmaker. The young man took his job very seriously and proved to be very adroit. At the heart of it, Ethan was driven to succeed in the family business. One day, Mr. Thompson, a major door manufacturer, offered the opportunity for a lucrative contract, promising huge profits for the small mom-and-pop shop. The young man, in wanting to clarify details of the contract, decided to meet with a representative of a consulting company. Before doing so, Ethan carefully poured over all the documents, studying every word and clause, and writing down questions as they came up. Full of the brightest hopes, the young man put on his best suit, and at the right hour, went on his way to the appointed address. Approaching the building, he was caught by surprise. In front of him stood a blank wall with five doors. Still dazzled, Ethan was able to notice that all the doors were of different sizes, as if they had been brought in from different houses. What strange tastes Mr. Thompson has, though, Ethan thought, randomly pulling the first door handle. Not budging, he moved to a second one, and a third, eventually trying all five, but they were all locked. Perplexed, the young man pulled out his phone to call his potential client and double-check the time of their appointment. But the phone on the other end of the call fell out of service range. Ethan didn't know what to do. If he left, the contract might fall apart. Not wanting to let his father down, Ethan pounded the wall with his fists and called out loudly for his host. When that didn't work either, Ethan started stomping his feet, but again, he got nowhere. In the heat of the moment, the stubborn young man tried to break down one of the doors, but to no avail. The desperate young man plumped himself on the ground, putting the file he brought with him on the ground. He ran out of ideas and knew not what to do next. Suddenly, Ethan saw Mr. Thompson approaching from around the corner. Young man, he smiled, immediately understanding. This is the booth we prepared for the exhibition. All the doors are bolted to the wall and it's impossible to open them. For a few seconds, he couldn't quite grasp the meaning of what was being said. He picked himself up, with a look of bewilderment covering his face. How had he not noticed at once that there was no roof over the wall, and the doors were too close together? He was too busy focused on improving his lot that he overlooked the details. What about the phone? I called. The young man mumbled, clutching the dusty folder in his hands. Apparently, I was in a warehouse with no communication. If you had called back just ten minutes later, everything would have been clarified, the man kindly explained. Burning with embarrassment over his desperation, the boy mumbled an apology. To get to the address, you just had to turn the corner and go into the pavilion. 
which we left open especially for you, Mr. Thompson added. And indeed, the doors of the pavilion behind the booth were hospitably open and just waiting to be entered. Sometimes we break through locked doors, seeing nothing but the goal, while the right solution is waiting for us just around the corner. We just need to remove ourselves from the situation, look around, and see it 